G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today's pattern and project for you is a little kawaii style owl. Now a few of you have asked me for a little owl in this style, something really simple and this is a really really quick and easy one to make. Makes great use of those very colourful fat quarters that I know you all have there in your stash just as I do. So I do try and keep all of the patterns and projects quite varied. I hope I'm getting it right for you all. Um, I like to do some that are very simple, some that are very easy, some that are quick and some that are more challenging and, and take more work. I know myself that I like to sometimes just have a project that I can make up quickly in a couple of hours and just get that satisfaction of having you know made something completely. So I hope I'm getting it right for you. Let me know in the comments if I am. Um, but today's quick and easy one, of course there's a free pattern for you. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below, print out those templates and let's get busy sewing. So let me show you what we need today to make our little owl up. We need two fabric prints and that will be our back and front. So we have both of those have fusible woven interfacing applied. Now we choose two prints and we have to remember that our back print, whatever we choose for our back print becomes this little owl's brow there. So I choose quite a busy bold print for the back of the owl and I also then go ahead and use that same print for the little wings. And the front of the owl I choose something with a very uniform tight little print that won't interfere with those, the, being able to see those little pattern pieces on the front. So I'm going to go with that little gingham which should work very well. Now the first thing we do, there's a little line on your template that you'll see that you need to add in at this stage on your front piece and that's where we're going to be uh, stitching over that line to make that little brow section. So we also then have our two little wing pieces which will overlap there and they have heat and bond on the back. You also need your little heart piece. I've done mine in felt with heat and bond. And you'll also need your little eye circles and your little iris. And they all have heat and bond on the back. Now you can see I've cut my little eye circles out with my pinking shears. If you don't have pinking shears, that's fine. Just cut on that circle. But you can see there how I've done that with, with my pinking shears. It just gives a nice little extra added um, decorative edge there um, and then you'll also need some little buttons to highlight those eyes something flat works best something nice and flat um, and you will need some clear craft glue you're also going to need our little base disc which is cut in felt with interfacing applied also for our base, we need either a little wooden disc. If you have a little wooden disc that, uh, that measures 55 millimeters, you can use that. Otherwise, just what I've done here, I've glued two pieces of matte board together. You've got your template there to do that and that gives you a very strong base. And you'll need some embroidery threads and some extra strong sewing threads. We will need at the end some, we will need, just at the end, we need a doll needle just to um, pull that little brow in. So our first step with this little owl is to press his little eye, first eye circles into place and we do that on the front section. Now you'll find on your pattern templates also that I have the position marked exactly for you. So you can follow that if you like exactly. It is important that you do put those little eye circles on exactly where I have them placed because when we fold, we do all this work now. When we put the owl together at the end, we pull that brow down and we need those eyes to be in that correct position. So I can tell you now that from the top of that little line, your little eye circle is two centimeters from the top exactly. And between those little two eye circles is about one and a quarter. So one and a quarter centimetres and make sure that you have them positioned the same either side. I tilt them out a little. They're not actually a circle. They're a little eclipse shape. So I just tilt them out a little on the side. 
It's very important that you get those in the right place. If you, uh, a little tip for pressing those on, before you go ahead and press them on, pop the iron on the blank piece of fabric first to warm that fabric up a little. Then once you, when you're positioning your little eyes in place, that little bit of warmth helps you keep them sitting in the right place. Then you throw your cloth over and press them into place. So that's our first step and we can go ahead and do that. Now there I have my little eye pieces pressed into place and you can see I've added li my little heart. Now the way that I've positioned that one is you can see exactly where your little wing pieces line up with the side of your little owl there. It just fits in nicely, just follow that curve. So I just pop my little wing pieces on and that will show me where I want my little heart to be. So I pop them on there, I slip my little heart in there and I like to have it just off centre a little, just like he's hugging that little heart. Then I remove those pieces and I press that little heart into place because our first step is going to be sewing. In some form we're going to be sewing those little eye circles in place and that little heart. Now with this little one I've taken all of my little pieces and I've done them all on the machine. In this case I'm going to be sewing around those little eye circles on the machine. I'm going to use a matching thread but on this little one I'm going to be sewing a blanket applique stitch right around the outside of that little heart first. I do that first because the, because the little wings get stitched on just slightly over the top. So I'm going to sew those ones on the machine just very close to the edge and sew that one with a blanket applique stitch and I'll be using a white Gudeman top stitch thread to really make that heart stand out. If you haven't sewn a blanket applique stitch before I'm going to pop a link up there that shows you a video that shows you exactly how to do that one. And there you can see I've got my stitching done on my first little eye circles done on the machine and then I've gone ahead and sewn that little blanket applique stitch by hand. Just wanted to give that little heart just a little bit of extra love with that stitch. So now our next step is to fuse into place our little iris pieces. Now with this little one I've actually situated those on the slightly outer edges of the eye so you can see the look that that gives you. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to move them more towards the center of the eye and turning outwards just like I did with the with the little circle because I want to give him more of a little quizzical look this time and remembering that that brow is going to come down in the center and we'll get that little uh, that little almost a little frown if you like a little thinking look I like to call it so we'll pop those closer in this time press those into place and while I'm there I'm going to press on the first of my little wing pieces to go over that little heart shape there and then I will stitch around on the machine that first little wing piece. I am going to sew these in on the machine also with a matching thread and then I will go ahead and add my second wing piece and also stitch that one into place overlapping the others. So there you can see I've got all of my little pattern pieces all stitched on now and I've gone ahead and added my little buttons and again doing them a little differently this time I've pulled them much closer over to the top and center of the eyes so that should give him a lovely little look so our next step you could also use um, little safety eyes here if you wanted to I just happen to like the buttons on this little project it gives it a really homely little look so our next step is just to sew our back to our front and we're just going to line up those bottom edges and you can use your clips or pins and it's a very simple seam. We're leaving the bottom open because we're going to pop that little cardboard disc in. So I'm just going to clip that all the way around, make sure all my edges are nicely lined up. And the seam that I'm going to sew is from this lower edge. It's a four millimeter seam and we sew right around that entire top edge. Make sure that top edge there, that point is a nice distinct point 
and down to the other side and I do like to sew that seam two times for strength. There you can see that I have my seam sewn two times and I've gone around with my pinking shears and just notched that little edge because it's a lot of curves. Um, if you don't have pinking shears just use your scissors and just do some little snips on those very tight curves there. So now all I need to do is turn him through and I will use my knitting needle to push out all of those little points. I've got my little owl all turned through and I've used my knitting needle to really define those, those little points there um, and just press that top section flat on my, with my iron because what we're going to do now is, and he looks a little odd doesn't he, he looks a little odd with his hair all up like that, he looks like me, he's stolen my hairstyle. <laughs> Um, we will remedy that. So we're going to take him over to the machine now. We're going to sew across that line that we made. We're just going to sew in across there and that will define that little section and it means that our stuffing will only go up to there and that will allow us to pull that little brow section down. I also will go ahead and sew a little close top stitch right around that top edge that just gives a nice finish to that little brow there and it gives it a really nice defined little look. So just on the machine, stitching across here and then just this top edge, a nice close little top stitch. And now my next step, now that I have stitched those lines in place, you can see my little top stitching done there and that allows me to pull that little brow down. We've defined that little point really nicely there. So now it's just a matter of filling this little owl and I'm going to use my forceps and it's important that we get into those top little what I call little ear areas and fill those out really well. Get right up into those corners on both sides because that will hold our little brow out nicely and give that little impression of those little horned ears. So it's just a matter of filling up our little owl nice and firm. We want him nice and firm because we're going to put our little base in there. I'll be using my wool felting needle as I go along to help pack those fibres in so that it's really quite nice and firm. You can see he's got a bit of bounce to him. So I'm not adding any weight to this little one because they stand just beautifully on their own. And if you are making this one for a child, you would use, of course, safety eyes and um, and you of course it's nice and light for them to grab a hold of and have a little chew on perhaps. So I'm going to fill this little owl right up to the top and pack that little section there nice and flat. There you can see my little owl is all filled up to the top and I've taken my felting needle and I've been able to pack all of that filling in and made that a nice flat little base. And then I've gone ahead and threaded my needle with a double strand of extra strong thread and I have sewn a running stitch around the entire base there just about five millimeters in and a nice close little stitch so we get some nice close little gathers. I've left my tail end hanging and gone right the way around that edge and that way I can just pull those little threads up around our little disc and so now I just add my little disc so I've just popped my little disc in there and just tied an initial knot and you can see that all I need to do is pull that in nice and firm. It doesn't have to meet all of the way but I'll get it in about that tight and I'll knock that one off about four times and I've still got my needle on so I'll probably go around that base again and just tie it off again just so that it's really really secure and just make sure that that little uh, that little um, disc is nicely centered in the middle there. And now I have that little base nicely tied into place and our next step is to add our little felt base. And so I have my clear craft glue and I've just added that to my little disc. I just flip that little one over and we're just going to glue that into place on the bottom. This just gives it a really nice professional finish and it covers up that little gathering spot. So press that one into place, make sure those edges are nicely sealed and we're going to let that dry for around about 10 minutes. 
So now my little base is all dry and I'm going to go around that bottom edge with my pearl thread so a slightly heavier weight pearl thread and I'm going to be sewing a little blanket applique stitch you can see there just right the way around so we go in at the bottom and you make sure that you're coming out and you're taking some of that fabric right on the edge there and that's going to bring those two layers together nicely and it's going to form that nice little binding stitch a nice little binding edge all the way around that you will see and it does give that last little bit of lovely finish you can see there that little line that's why we're using a slightly heavier weight thread for this little section it's really worthwhile so I'm going to make my way all the way around that little disc there and there you can see that's my stitching finished my little base is in place and my final step is to bring that little brow down on our little owl now you first of all you have to decide just how far down you want that little brow to sit now this little owl doesn't have a beak I haven't given him a beak um, he's going to be a little listening owl he's not going to say much but I don't I do like the very clean lines of this design without adding too much on there and making it too busy around this section and I think that you get that lovely indication of a little beak there anyway if you particularly do want to add a little beak with this part of the process you could simply take some embroidery thread and you could stitch a couple of stitches to create a little v-shape to create a little beak on the end of that if you wanted to I just like the clean finish that this one has so I won't be adding a beak so what I'm going to be doing is coming in from behind so I first of all made a little spot in the middle there because I've decided that's exactly where I want my little my little brow to sit and of course I've allowed for a little bit of space probably about three millimeters from the end there and I'm going to be coming in at the back of that little that, that little flap there so we're going to be coming in from behind at about the same level right in the center and I'm going to come out just one side of my little mark you don't really need a really long doll needle to do this that I have here so long as it will pass through your little owl will be fine so I've got a doubled extra strong thread I don't have a knot in the end I've just got tails hanging and so I've come in that side I'm going to go to the back of my little my little mask uh, brow piece and I'm going to take my needle and just take one stitch across straight across but I'm not going through the front of the fabric so we don't want to see this stitch see there and pass that one through and then I'm going to go back in the other side of that little dot there and where I want to come out is straight out of the same hole that we just went into so what I'm going to do pull my thread aside there and I'm just going to part those fibers I don't want to cut it and with my awl I've just made that hole a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier for us to find you find it is quite easy to find your needle wants to go there so that's coming straight out of that same hole and that's going to pull my little brow down you want to make sure that your threads aren't twisted and you can see that that will pull that little brow down in place check that your positioning is right and all we need to do is knot that one off two or three times with our threads and you'll find that we're knotting it off onto the stuffing not onto the back of the fabric so that little knot will sink back into the head all you need to do then three thread your little ends dive them back into that little hole and you can lose them into the body and there you can see a little owl all finished that little brow is nicely in place and we have no evidence of that on the back there at all so he's all done what a perfect little product for um, craft markets or for 
baby's nurseries. This little one would look absolutely wonderful made up in pastels for a baby's room or perhaps give it a try in all different coloured denims and use some tan accents. That would be absolutely amazing. And I hope you get to make it for somebody. Perhaps you, you have somebody in your life who you want to tell them that you've got their heart. What a perfect little way to pay it forward. Well, thank you all for sewing with me today and making up Little Loving Owl. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely beaut. All of you who have subscribed, thank you so much for your support. If you haven't, you want to do so because you don't want to miss any of the up and coming projects. I've got so many exciting things coming up for you all. Trying to keep it all varied, like I said. Are you following on me on Instagram, anybody? If you are, thank you so much. And you should because you can get to see little sneaky peeks of the up and coming projects. You can be a step ahead of the game before they come out on video. So look forward to seeing you send me pictures too. Send me pictures via Instagram of all of the little projects you're making with my patterns. That makes me very, very happy to receive those in my day. And I will post them on my Pinterest board that is made especially just for all of you to show off all of the clever things you've been making. Most of all, everybody, all of those good things, make sure that you pay them forward because we all can. Until next time, it's Huru from me.